Okay, it's just before nine o'clock. I'm just setting the technology up. I've got about three screens I'm looking at. And so I'm hoping to come on air at nine o'clock. But I just want to make sure everything's working. So I hope you're sitting comfortably. <laughs> and I'm about to get started just setting everything up on different screens and funnily enough the very information I'm looking for is the clock because I don't want to start before nine o'clock but I feel I need to check that I am actually coming out live so if you're watching this um, tomorrow if you followed my logic just skip the first few seconds until you see my head my face appear then that is the live stream that started which should start at any time now as I say I'm lining up quite a lot I hope you'll stay with me if you're I see there are about eight people already sitting down I assume you're sitting down uh, so I have prepared this one uh, but no doubt it won't go to plan but I'll try and keep it tight and I'm just looking I'm going off my own clock in fact let's look at my smart watch see what the time is it says it's one minute to two so I'm going to be precise and start proper at nine o'clock itself oh I'm nervous can you believe it and here I am talking about confidence <laughs> ah, so it's nine o'clock. Hi, my name's Jeremy Brune, and welcome to this live stream. The topic of this session, and I'm going to keep it hopefully to about half an hour, is confidence how you gain confidence at woodworking. And the reason for this topic is um, that one of my videos I put up called uh, 10 more ways to succeed at woodworking somebody wrote in and said yeah 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 I've I've seen all I know all the rules but how do I get confidence so I thought this would be a really good one to start off with so uh, I was going to wear a bow tie uh, but I couldn't find it because I haven't worn it since about 1863 but um, it reminded me that uh, an ex-head of department of mine, an amazing guy called Chris Simpson, when I taught at Rikert College, used to wear a bow tie all the time. And uh, a, a fellow furniture maker friend called Nicholas Chandler, who knows he might be watching this evening, he's based in Seville. And when I used to organize some exhibitions, he uh, always wore a bow tie. So already, you know, linked to this idea of confidence is feeling good. So why not dress up for the occasion? But as I say, I've forgotten my bow tie, but in future sessions, I probably will wear a bow tie. And then people can say, ah, he's silly. He's a woodworker. Uh, but I'm not actually in the workshop, as you can see. Now, okay, so what's gonna happen? Well, first of all, welcome uh, to this session. The topic is, uh, how do you gain confidence at woodworking? And how this is going to work, I hope, is that I'm going to start off and uh, keep an eye on my watch and uh, talk about uh, various ideas exploring the notion of confidence because it's, 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 yeah, there's a lot to it. It's like an onion, unpeeling the layers. And I'm obviously going to start with a brief personal story and that might actually shock you um, or surprise you and how I actually gain confident because I'll say now there are many things I'm not confident at but I've always been confident at woodwork and maybe I've been very lucky but I want to share this confidence with you and I'm assuming that you are either a beginner or oh, I've just heard a voice sorry oh do you know what I um, prompted Siri on my mobile phone. Sorry about that. I told you everything goes to plan. Now I've lost my train of thought. Um, 
Oh, yes, I'm assuming that you're either a beginner uh, or and, and, and also that you, you, you're familiar with my channel. So I'm going to quickly switch to one of my, what I did earlier. Here we are. Here are some sample topics uh, of my videos. And you can see, and these are the woodworking ones, because my channel isn't just about woodworking, it's pre predominantly woodworking. But um, this is an opportunity for me to engage with you and come clean over one or two of my um, titles that I've almost had death threats over, like why I don't use a pencil. You know, I have to be provocative sometimes just to get people to watch. Um, so let's quickly look at some other titles. These, are, I mean, I think I've got something like 700 videos up there and they range from about three minutes long to a, a fully blown documentary on a, a furniture maker friend of mine, 45 minutes. Uh, and here you can see my other interests such as the kit car I'm building, my music interests, etc. So that's just uh, very quickly. Uh, so going back, uh, there are going to be a lot of ums and ahs and rambling. So I'm going to say now, um, yeah, I, I will perfectly understand if you leave, but before you leave, uh, I will ask you to come back when this is all up on my channel and you'll see the timeline of comments that have been made and then you can tune in and scroll to those things so I think this is quite an exciting platform it's new ground for me I know there are a lot of woodworkers out there that are old hats at this in America and Australia there are a few guys doing this and I'm a total beginner uh, but that's the way it will work but regarding the rambling uh, this is one of the reasons I'd like to deliver what I'm going to say first and then I rather than me dart around between all these screens I can then look at the comments you've made so I'll hope you'll start and I already see people um, have started introducing but I'd like to engage with you a little bit later on but first of all hello Graham from Manchester Robert Judy you tuned into my last one. Oh, Joe Tozer wow Thanks, Joe. Joe's my young musician friend, um, and he does a bit of woodwork as well. So as I say, I'm going to hopefully engage with you after I've delivered my brief spiel, which is focused around the topic of how do you gain confidence at woodwork? So let's start off by um, looking at the, the word confidence full on. What does it mean? Well, you've probably all watched um, Michael Douglas in um, Wall Street or whatever it was called but there's that kind of salesman confidence that's a persona and in some cases it's a false confidence in fact the word con is linked to the word confidence I'm obviously not talking about that I'm talking about a, an inner confidence that that you and I need if we are engaging with tools and materials and and all the complexities working with wood but it's essentially the relationship with wood so I'm going to move on because I've been on air for five minutes already and I'm going to start off with my own very brief story about how I gained confidence and I would say in a nutshell that I turned a negative in a positive because um, when I showed an interest early on at the age of 10 my father wouldn't let me use his workshop he thought I'd mess up his tools and he was an academic and he wanted me to be, you know, like a brilliant university professor. Well, I wasn't. I was, you know, pretty average at school, but clearly not academic. So um, I, I went to another school and I failed GCEO level with all the rest of the class. Um, so the teacher wasn't very good. Then suddenly, when I was about 16, 17, we had a new teacher, his name was Howard Orme. He was absolutely brilliant, quite eccentric, but so inspiring that I, within two terms, got a grade A at A level. It's normally, um, it's normally a two year course. So I followed in his footsteps and my father died when I was 17. It wasn't a happy relationship, but I was actually free from the age of 17. I was my own person. And this is another aspect I'll deal with later on about how you get confidence so of course I made a lot of mistakes but and then I set up I taught for a little while and I set up a workshop and I had no market I had no tools no capital I had no market because I was I wasn't copying uh, you know period furniture I was uh, 
doing my own designs. So I really was going in the deep end. There was nowhere to sell my work, but to cut a long story short, I persevered. But I, but I was confident because I, so what is it about confidence? It's like having a vision that you will, that you'll do it, you know, and obviously success. I mean, we're talking about real skills here and we all make mistakes, but confidence is a funny thing. And um, I don't know whether I mentioned, but this topic was provoked by somebody who watched um, a film a video I made on my channel called 10 steps, 10, be 10 more steps to s for success in woodworking. And he said, yeah, 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 I've read all that, but how do you get confidence? And I forget his name, but this session is really based on his question. All right, so moving on, that's my kind of personal story. Oh, and of course I've got the wrong, um, <laughs> the wrong uh, image up. No, it's not that one. Okay, I've got a little collage of images here. Sorry, I should have put this up a few minutes ago, but bear with me. I trained at Shoreditch College and this, um, in hand, as a handicrafts teacher. And although I followed the advanced wood course, I also learned metalworking and all sorts of other crafts. And, and so one of the things I think helps is to have a broader view of woodworking and not to get too much in a rut. Um, I almost feel that all woodworking makes Jack a dull boy, but you can focus too much uh, so having a, a, a feel and, and, and a passion for working other materials, I think is an advantage. It gives you a broader scope. All right, I make guitars, uh, the router. Some of you who know me know I wrote a book on the router. I knew nothing about it um, back in 1974. One was dropped off to me by a salesman. He said, you know, really, um, I, just for people who've just joined me, I'll just say a general hello to you. I see quite a few of said hello greetings from amsterdam i'm just going to deliver my spiel first if i may and i'll tr try and keep this brief just to open up the topic of gaining confidence at woodwork and then i will hopefully engage with you uh, uh, and and in a way you know i i, I it, i'm fine with maybe having just 20 or so people because if the class is too big i won't be able to engage with you and, and answer your questions so, yeah, so here we are. There's my um, my teacher, Howard Orm. As I say, I, I meant to put this image up on the screen while I was talking of, about my, my own history. And I'm building a canoe, age 17. This is a bench I made for the, um, the school. They commissioned me. So they had confidence in me. And it's like, th th this is this, whether you call it sod's law, but they say, you know, money begets money. If you start with money, you make money. And success... Uh, begets success and uh, breeds success and it's absolutely true but how do you get there how you know well success is based on failure we know that so I'm quickly going to look at this splayed coffee table I made this in 1962 it's made out of three sections of wood um, American black walnut on the outside and ramen on the inside so they're all the 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 they're hard woods but I could not get the edge join straight so the table started off a certain size and it got smaller and smaller and smaller. But I, I wouldn't give up. And it was still a table at the end of the day. I mean, so what, it was smaller. So, and then putting the clock forward, this one here is my tilt rocker where I've used a wooden spring, rather like the wooden springs on a Morris 1000, um, you know, leaf springs on a car. And that's made out of some oak. <clears throat> and I sold that chair for about two and a half thousand pounds. So, I mean, this is, you know, this is me age 16 and this is me um, back in 2009. Uh, quite a complex uh, design uh, for a chair. So, let's move on. And, of course, this screen has now died. So, let's rejuvenate it. So, confidence. Okay, let's look at it. Confidence. It's, it's, it's linked to ability, to skill, um, flair if you're lucky to have it. That's a whole different debate, whether flair is something you're born with or whether you can acquire it. As I say, I failed my woodwork to start with and and I had, I would say that my successes uh, for what they are have been ba based on failures, on negation, on being negated by galleries, but I would not give up. So there's a kind of determination, but confidence also, I believe uh, <clears throat> you can be too confident and, and then you can be cocky. And it's like if you're too fast at woodwork, you make mistakes. So it, it's knowing what you're capable of. It's, you know, it's difficult to define, but, but 
Um, I hope, you know, when you've added your comments, <clears throat> that we'll, whoops, just drop the mouse. <laughs> oh dear. The last time I dropped the mouse, the little ball fell out and I was scrambling on the floor. And in fact, reminds me, one of the few live streaming videos I've looked at, there's a guy in America and he, he was looking for a tool and he left, he went out of shot for about half an hour. And I think his live stream was about three hours. So um, a friend of mine said to me, keep it short, try and keep it half an hour. I've been almost online for a quarter of an hour and I'm almost done with what I want to say. So let's just, what other point did I want to cover? Gymnastics. I used to do gymnastics when I was younger. Now, when you commit yourself to doing a somersault, I could do somersaults off the floor. It's called tumbling. Not Olympic stuff, but, but stuff that I could easily break my neck if I got it wrong. So I was committed. The moment I got the energy and the spring to get the height, to then get the rotation, there was no hesitation. I had to go for it. And of course, in learning to perfect it, you'd land on your, you know, on your backside and, you know, in a, or you'd, you'd, you'd hit your chin against the, your chest, whatever. But, but you, you had to go for it. So I would say one of the things with confidence <clears throat> is just do it. Don't sit and worry because one of the biggest blocks to confidence is fear. And of course, it's fear of failure. And, you know, often people say, well, it's the fear of the fear. And we all have fears. <clears throat> there are lots of things in life I'm not confident about. I'm not going to go into them here. But they're things that probably you, as a viewer, are quite confident about. And I'm not. But I am confident about a woodwork. So I want to share that with you. So just do it. Just go for it. And don't worry about what other people think about you. A lot of social confidence is too linked up with, oh, what your peer group think. Again, I've been very lucky. I've always been my own person. That doesn't mean to say I don't care what other people think, but I am, you know, you have to be your own person. And well, that's all I can sort of say on that. Embrace failure um, and play to your strengths because, um, you know, if you've, in fact, that leads me on to, let's change this, simple steps. I'm assuming you're a beginner. How do you get started? Well, you don't start with really complicated things like most of us when we started woodworking at school, we were given oak, which is like steel to work. You know, that put off most of the boys in the class. So here's some simple projects that I've designed over the years. Now this one here is a leaning book stand and I'm almost finished uh, with my spiel before I engage with you. So I'm just, uh, hello. Uh, somebody says his screen is black well I've got no guarantee of knowing what you can see all I can see is myself on a screen as I as I assume you do so it would be good to have feedback from you about whether I'm coming over uh, I've just upgraded to fiber broadband because my early attempts were breaking up but this should be continuous but yeah so just to finish my little talk these are very simple objects and this is a leaning book stand. I was asked to do a master class uh, for 15 rolls at a grammar school in Surrey a couple of years ago. And I designed this to be done in a day. And when I was a school teacher, this was a project I, was, I would be getting 12 year olds to do. So they are not teaching woodwork in schools, but that is another, that's another issue. Okay, I think I've said what I want to say. It's gone more or less to plan. I, I want to be online for around about half an hour to keep it reasonably short. Thank you for joining me. Um, and now it's over to you for me to uh, read some of your comments and say hello to you. Um, so I've already said hello to Graham, um, who's in Manchester. Um, and I know he's got a plumbing background, but has done some woodwork. Robert Judy, hello again to you from um, the USA. And it's four o'clock or it was a few minutes ago when you wrote in. Uh, hi to Joe. Uh, Joe's an incredible musician, if I may, may say so, and um, plays the mandolin. 
and um, Robert has said a pencil provokes someone. I'm just going through this. Greetings from Amsterdam. Hello, Oscar. I'm looking on another screen, so I'm not looking at the camera. Um, Sirius Wood uh, from Romania. Uh, welcome. This is your first time here, so I hope it won't be your last time. And your English is very good. Uh, so I'd be interested to know what kind of woodworking you do and, and, and whether you've got any questions about confidence. Uh, Graham's asked me what the gadget is on the top left. Well, of course, now I've changed screens, so I'm not too sure. But I'm guessing, Graham, that you are referring to the the uh, the stylus. I, I probably didn't say what it was. I said I made it when I was 16. I beg your pardon. It was designed by an uncle of mine who is called Burn Jones, which is a familiar name to some of you um, and it was a, a parallelogram rec turntable stylus as the as it, a normal stylus is works on an arc so for a stereo in a stereo groove it moves and it distorts sound parallelogram keeps perpendicular to the groove in the vinyl record and I made a replica of this out of aluminium with little graphite pivots so that hopefully answers that question, um, which of course is nothing to do with confidence. Uh, so the topic is confidence. I've just lost my screen again. When I click down on one, I lose the other screen. Uh, Elton uh, from County Cork. Oh, um, I wonder if we've met. I was over there in 2006 at the Create event. And maybe you were one of the guys exhibiting there. I don't know, but I've met some really fine um, Irish woodworkers and had the great privilege to teach them up in Connemara at the Furniture College. David Ristik from Serbia. If you're not afraid to try it, you will succeed. Yep, absolutely, David. Um, you, we've got to face the fear. And the, unfortunately, fear, well, fear is what sells newspapers, isn't it? It's a fundamental human failing or attribute or whatever. It, it's in our psyche. And the thing is, what have you got to lose? So you mess up a bit of wood. You can either make good or just throw it away and start again. But yeah, uh, Mr. Zombie. <laughs> I'm 20 and I left high school at 17. I've done woodworking for five years in schools. And after school, I went off to do roofing when I was 17 to 18, went to college and I've done some joinery now and I'm doing furniture making at college. Good for you. It sounds as though you have confidence. Um, so good luck to you. Um, thank you, Graham and Robert for giving me feedback that I'm coming over okay um, um, in terms of picture and sound. Uh, Lasno, hello to you. Looks good, thank you. Oscar, explain that Walsh process. Don't have £80,000 to spend on a dining table, but I want one. <laughs> I I think you're referring to Joseph Walsh, who who makes very top end. I mean, he's, he's an artist. He's a wood sculptor. And um, let's keep the topic to confidence, please. Gaining confidence but in a way that's relevant because you have to be confident to charge 80 grand <clears throat> i don't think i quite have that level of confidence to charge um although i've exhibited alongside john Matepeace, who would charge a hundred thousand for a chair <clears throat> i wouldn't have the nerve or the interest to ask those sort of prices thank you for doing this yes graham thank you couldn't work it out um for sure you need confidence for sure not the last time here. A lot of my questions in my mind. Working with reclaimed wood. Okay, so I'm hoping that you will ask me some more questions. Is there anything I haven't covered? And of course, the benefit of this live stream is it will be recorded on my channel and anybody can watch it at any time afterwards and they will see your comments. Uh, 
Robert has said, recent learning for me, commit to doing something I fear for five minutes, frequently work beyond completion. Sorry, I didn't quite get that. I, I've got a confession to make. I was, I didn't get to bed till four o'clock this morning. I downed half a bottle of rum with my next door neighbour and she, I just asked her, would she be watching tonight? And she said she was in bed, poor girl. Um, I think that was, um, and I'm feeling really guilty uh, for leading her astray with a bottle of rum at four o'clock this morning. But I'm still on my feet. And if you see a bit of flickering, that's because I'm on my mugshot. That's because I'm using a very bright LED light and there's some sort of um, vibration going on. Why do you think confidence drops after a failure? Well... Well, if you take a young child who's learning to ride a bike, and I guess most kids, or certainly in my day, um, they weren't formally taught. They just get on, they fall off, they graze their knees, they get entangled in the chain and, you know, almost kill themselves. But what do they do? They get straight back on the bike. So it's something about we adults, and, and it's, it's, it's a kind of self-conscious thing that we can't take failure. Now... Clearly, practice comes into this. You know, you've, you've got to keep at it. You've got to practice, practice, practice. Um, rum always helps, says Oscar. Yeah, and you know what? I prefer it to whiskey. I find whiskey is rather like when I was in South Australia in um, 46 degrees. And every time I took a deep breath, it was like hot whiskey going down my gullet. But rum is just nicer. And rum is very medicinal as well, I think. And um, ten or eight. <laughs> I can't see anything. Probably need an upgrade or something. Sirius Wood has said, oh dear. Well, um, if you can hear me, Sirius Wood, then I suggest you come back and view this later when it's recorded. And then hopefully you've got your streaming, your own streaming problems sorted out. It's, this is what's so complicated about this technology. It's absolute miracle of technology that I can come over to anybody around the globe um, and we've got time zones now of, of about nine hours so that is literally the other side of the globe um, and the miracle of, of within there's a 20 second lag I can tell you that um, between me coming out live and you receiving it which of course you don't notice it um, but it's a miracle, but but within that miracle is a lot of complex technology about the strength of my signal going out and what your signal is and how many people are using the internet at a certain time. And that, in fact, reminds me of a very important thing. I'd like some of you guys to ask me, to tell me, um, what is a good time for regular live streaming? Because I really guessed, that I just thought Sunday night, 9 o'clock, will cater for people in Australia and America and Britain. Um, but then I don't know what's on television at the moment, whether the Six Nations rugby or, you know, there are so many complex factors. Sydney Austin says, good view and I like your work. Thank, thank you. Th thank you, Sydney. What other screens have I got here? That was the first. These are two designs of mine. And I would say I'm confident enough to make something completely different and take the risk that it might not sell. Well, that one sold for five and a half thousand pounds, and that one I sold last year for fifteen hundred pounds, and that and this one's a chair made out of plywood. So if you don't stick your neck out, you don't get anywhere. I'm not saying I sell these every day, of course, but I have the confidence that um, if I like it enough for me to live with it, I would hope that somebody else um, would like it enough. It sounds very selfish, it probably is. I have to please myself. I have to be pleased with my own work. Uh, so what other images? I've shown that image. There was my first coffee table that was almost a disaster. The first canoe I built. Oh yeah, little joint here um, that gets over the thing that you've got to get it right first time in woodwork. So the joint has got to fit. There's no point messing about and chiseling. You've got to saw it in the right position, put it together, bang tight joint that comes with practice but it also comes with method methods very very important um lasno good evening or good morning 
you said, would I say the overall vision on a project is more important? The lack in skill will be exposed and sorted out after the project goes along. Well, I would say stretch a little bit further than your grasp. In other words, don't be over ambitious, but be a little bit ambitious in stretching your skills, but keep it simple. And we make mistakes. And we one of the thing about wood is we learn as we go along. I mean, one of my recent videos was encapsulating a, a, a slice of end grain in polyester re in epoxy resin to stop it splitting. It was an experiment. I mean, I've been working wood for 50 years and I didn't know whether it would work or not. I had a hunch it would work and it has worked. I totally stopped it from. Um, I don't know whether that answered your question. <laughs> Probably didn't. Um, does piece of work reflect the artist's confidence? Wow, that's a really interesting question. Um, Oscar asked that. Oh, d does the price of the work reflect the artist's confidence? Um, sorry, I, I've misread that. Does the piece of work? <laughs> I, I was thinking of the design because I, you know, the design emits an awful lot. Um, for instance, my designs are bold, and that means I am bold at woodwork. I have no fear. You know, a lot of people are very, very reserved and restrained over how they use decoration or how they make things. So that I misinterpret, I misread what you said. But does the price of the work reflect? Oh, oh, absolutely. But who knows? It might be false confidence, um, because uh, it's a mystery to me why somebody would charge a hundred thousand pounds for a chair when it's not going to be sat on at that price i'd rather people sit on my work and use it and does the design of the work reflect the confidence to well yes we've just covered that in a way yes you've asked the second question which i have already answered i think i'm getting what's called an emojo smiley now you know what i've been exactly half an hour and i'm and there's my alarm and I'm going to keep to my plan and mainly because my previous experiments um, didn't go to plan. So I'm, I'm going to wind this up in a minute and just to kind of recap. Gaining confidence at woodworking, just go for it, do it. Don't be afraid of failure because that's part and parcel of it. What's the big deal with failing? You know, I, I used to busk as a musician with my guitar and it's how I learned my craft by making huge mistakes, forgetting my chords, but nobody cared, you know, but if you care, then other people will care. Now, obviously, if I'm doing an exhibition piece, of course I care. I won't get invited back if it's full of mistakes. So you gain your confidence when you've got your confidence, then go out there and present it to the world. Um, so don't care too much about what other people think about you over this failure thing. Failure is an absolutely necessary aspect and mistake. I mean, uh, as this is my bottle of rum is is now kicking in. Um, I've forgotten what I was going to say. Play to your strengths. Tenre, I'm trust your gut, Cirrus Wood. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is really good. I thank you very much for joining in. Um, I would ask you maybe to leave a, co leave a comment either now or later for suggestions of other topics that you feel I could deliver. I'm obviously not a run of the mill woodworker. You'll get answers to a lot of questions answered much better by lo loads of other guys. Uh, they do it much better than me. I have a particular angle on furniture, on design. In fact, design is one of the things I'd like to cover. Um, how do you actually design? How do you make your own decisions? That could be a future topic. Um, but I'm go and somebody said, have a nice day, Uncle Jeremy. <laughs> well, as long as you don't call me Grandpa Jeremy. But thank you all for watching. And as I say, please add comments later, share this and tune in again, please. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm just trying to find the stop button. There's probably something really important I wanted to say, but you can't do it all. Thank you very much. Bye bye.